So we're going to talk real quickly in this video about our must-have, or at least our most frequently used, or our favorite, or our most valued <laughs> gear, tools, and gadgets for 2023. I've been reading this kind of list for a long time, back when people were blogging. I sometimes watch them on YouTube, too. So this is just the stuff that is not an inventory of everything in our kitchen or everything in our toolboxes out in the van, but just kind of some of the, the things that provide a lot of value and that we use regularly thought you guys at least might find us entertaining if not uh it may be helpful in a few things maybe you'll pick up some tips that uh that might help you out time codes for all of the things we talk about are in the video description below if you want to jump ahead if you're not interested in a particular uh topic and also links to many of these items will be in the video description if we can find them somewhere online to link to some of those are affiliate links in no case will it cost you any more money uh but it, we might make a small commission if uh, you do use one of those links okay first up blue eddy power stations these things are amazing we use these mostly when we're off grid uh, but sometimes on grid because they're so amazing uh, the two we have are the eb70s and the eb3a which is a one generation old units um, I, I think they have new versions of both of those out now or equivalent versions coming out here's the thing if i was starting over again today i would be going with blue eddies and flexible uh, foldable solar panels rather than a traditional built-in DIY system. I think they're that good. Uh, we have videos about both of these, so uh, links to those in the description. We're not going to go into them in detail, but they're fantastic. We use them all the time. Melanie particularly likes the little EB3A because it's so light okay. and you can move it around and use it for different things in the trailer even. Next up, our, our newest gizmo, the Skull Candy. I cringe at the name. The Skull Candy Ounce XT Bluetooth Speaker. That's our newest gizmo. Uh, I use noise canceling headphones for video editing, but we got this little wireless Bluetooth speaker just last week or something, I guess. Uh, we watch videos together in the evening sometimes, like Bob Ross painting videos, you know, uh, or some van life videos, you know. <laughs> uh, Sunday morning, we follow my father's uh, live stream, my father's church service. He's out in Massachusetts right now. The laptop speakers sometimes don't cut it, especially if the audio on a video is a little bit soft. So we got this Bluetooth speaker. We can put it where we want it. And, you know, the sound quality is good enough for YouTube videos for sure. It's USB-C rechargeable, which is the only USB technology I'll buy anymore. And it's like 25 bucks at Walmart. The song comes from his heart. He's an old He'll tell his tale near and far. and like i said i use headphones for editing uh the ones i have these days i've had several over the years some of them lasted a few months, some of them lasted several years, but I'm currently using Anchor Soundcore Life Q20 Plus SE noise canceling wireless headphones. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Good value for the money, the noise canceling over the air, which is a big deal when you're spending hours and hours and hours editing videos. Uh, the Bluetooth wireless or corded USB C rechargeable. I think they're about 60 bucks at Walmart. So they're not like $300 or $1,000 studio headphones, but they got pretty darn good sound. And with the noise canceling, I can literally sit here right where I'm sitting, editing videos. The melody can be sitting on the other side of the table, right behind where you all are on the tripod here. And she can be playing hymns on her app on her phone and I can't hear her. <laughs> so it works pretty well. Uh, <laughs> task light. It's sitting on our table right here as we talk. Actually, the task light. It's now shining on us because it's adjustable. <laughs> it's adjustable color, temperature, and brightness, which is really cool. But we use it for things like reading, uh, different tasks we might do, like Sewing. wood carving. Yeah, wood carving. I used to <laughs> use it for tasks like wood carving. We're now, trying to do painting now. Yeah, we're painting. <laughs> now I want to use it for sewing. Eating, because I like to see what I'm eating. Melanie makes these delicious meals, and I won't be able to see it. Uh, anyways, positionable, positionable for optimal lighting, like when I'm recording a video and I remember to turn it to face me, it works great for that. K 
cast, but it casts the light for the day to day stuff. It casts the light downward where you want it instead of lighting up the whole trailer, which is kind of nice. So it does require AC shore power or an inverter. Like if you have a Blue Eddy, we plugged this thing into the Blue Eddy just to see how much power it took. And when it's on low, it didn't even register. Uh, it shows zero. I'm just taking that little power. And on high, it was what, nine watts? Nine watts. So virtually nothing. I think it was $30 or $35 at Walmart, something like that. So it's pretty cool. Works well for us. Lucy lights. Lucy lights. These are my favorite. I've had one for years and I just use it at night when I'm reading before I go to bed mainly. And when I first was traveling, I didn't have a solar, a solar electric system built in to my rig. And so I relied on Lucy lights and I had a couple of them charge them up outside every day and bring them back in at night. And that was it. And when they, it would last about six hours, I think. And so in the winter, that meant when the light, Lucy light went out, I went to bed. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> duct tape. I, I don't know if I have to say anything about that. It, it's, <laughs> you got to have duct tape. Years ago, my, my niece, Rachel, she actually made me a, a duct tape wallet for Christmas one year. I think it got pretty torched cool. in the house fire. That's why I don't still have it, but it's oh. pretty cool. So <laughs> we use it for lots of stuff. I prefer camo because it's me. Melanie prefers silver, <laughs> traditional silver that she keeps in her Prius. What do the girls call it? A rocket ship. Yeah, the girls said it's a rocket <laughs> ship. So zip ties, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Yeah. We use zip ties in the mountains this fall when we blew out a heater hose in the van. I think we, we mentioned that in a video about the Gambler 500. Try and put a link to that for you in the description, but they're useful for all kinds of things. So, um, including jewelry. So, you know, Make sure you have some zip ties on hand. A few different sizes is really good. Vice grips. I carry a fair tool selection. I did not have vice grips. And when we blew out a heater hose in September up in the mountains, some of the other guys in the Gambler 500, we all pitched in and everybody contributed what they had. And between all that, we got water. We got to get us back to camp. We got vice grips. We got zip ties. We got it done. We got back to camp. May eventually made it back to town. Um, as a matter of fact, I have... So I, so I promptly went to the store and bought a couple pair of vice grips in slightly different styles. I have three pair right now, but only two of them belong to me. The other one's from a friend from the Gambler 500. We'll get them back to him next year at the Gambler 500 Wyoming 2024. Yeah. <laughs> Hot water bottles. Hot water bottles. These are my I'm a, favorite. I'm a fan now, but it's all because yeah. of her. Yeah, I couldn't live without a hot water bottle. They're old fashioned, but they definitely can keep you warm, ease your aching muscles. My old fashioned and, gal here. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a must. Thank you, dear. Oh. Uh. Yeah, they're great. Number one reason I use them is for back aches. I've had pretty big back problems for a long time. They work great for that. Hot water bottles or the rice bag or bean bag things you heat up in the microwave, either one of them, they just radiate deep and, and, and the muscle tissue, and that's that's great. Um, but yeah, like Matt was saying, staying warm, if you're if you're cold in the evening or at night, you stick one of them in bed with you or you're under a blanket with you as you're as you're curled up on the couch, and it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. I put one of them behind my back, near my kidneys, right? It's for my back, but it's near my kidneys, coincidentally. Not too long, and I'm like, whew, I gotta start stripping down because it's warming me right up. Teapot. Teapot. I love my teapot. <laughs> Enough said. It's it's large. It can you can heat up a large quantity of water, and and when you don't have a hot water heater, it's that's what you need. And yours came from what the Vermont Country Store? I think, I think mine, yeah, mine came from the Vermont Country Store. So. So you may have to hunt to find a good one. Yeah. It's not a Walmart teapot. Yeah, we. Uh, I think it's steel. Stainless steel instead of the aluminum, so. All right, the thermos water bottle thingy. Yeah, I like my my thermos. It uh, keeps cold drinks cold, warm drinks warm. Um, I've even filled it up with like hot tea and put it in the inside pocket of my jacket to go to games that are at night that are kind of cold around here and <laughs> keeps uh, me these, nice and warm. And these bottles have served us well. They came from Walmart. They're not super expensive. I think they're about 12 bucks a piece. The one, these very specific ones. Yeah. Um, I think we bought them when we were down in the desert. Um, so I don't know if every Walmart has them, but uh, they, they've worked very well. We've yeah. been very happy with them. They get used a lot. Yeah. Handkerchiefs. 
handkerchiefs. This is one of my favorites too. I, you know, when you live in a small space, a tissue box gets beaten up, and having a handkerchief right there whenever you need it, it's really handy. First aid kit. Uh, yeah, I used to work in an ambulance, so I'm used to quite a robust set of medical supplies. I don't carry all that these days, but I do insist on carrying some basic first aid stuff, and that goes from the immediate trauma, like bandages and and uh, uh, you know dressings and things, but also uh, I, this quick stop bleed stuff, but also things like a tourniquet, because well, yeah, I ended up with one in the ER trying to get this bleeding stopped when I did this recently, but um, also things like Neosporin or some kind of antibiotic limit, just those kind of things. Uh, I carry Benadryl and, you know, other things like that. Here's the point. I may not use all of it all the time, but when we go camping, we're oftentimes an hour or two hours from town, and you just got to be able to take care of yourself. Uh, so uh, we try and have enough stuff that whatever comes up, we can at least improvise and make something done. We're both pretty creative, but we got to make get stuff done. New favorite for us, I mean, we well, real salt. We've been using salt, like we usually use a Himalayan salt. I have some awesome, a little bit of some awesome salt left in the cabinet. That's from Duxbury, Massachusetts. My mother sent to me. Uh, it's got, it's all sea salt and it's, you know, five different flavors. And while well, one plain one and four different flavors with different, different seasoning blends. Anyway, we recently came across real salt. We couldn't find the Himalayan. We switched to real salt and two thumbs up if you ask me. Yep. It's from Utah. It's actually mined out of the ground in Utah. So it's made in the USA. And in our case, it went from Utah to Texas to Colorado to Wyoming when we ordered it online. But we could have just drove over and picked it up. Melanie likes to use salt for the nutritional benefits as well. Yeah, there's a lot of minerals in it. Uh, the thing with the this real salt, it is uh, an ancient underground lake bed so it doesn't have any of the microplastics that a lot of the sea salts do. Um, I also like to keep it in a nice handy dandy salt shaker that has a top that uh, closes down on it so when you're traveling you don't have salt go everywhere. No adventure. All right warm clothing because why? Because it's November. We're recording this November 22nd the day before Thanksgiving 2023. We're in northeast Wyoming it is in the low 60s today. It is gorgeous. And there's a cold front coming in tonight. And from this evening, Wednesday through Friday morning, all the way over Thanksgiving, we have a winter storm watch. We're supposed to have a major snowstorm and the temperatures are dropping into the single digits overnight. So warm clothing. Warm clothing. That's a must. I, I prefer something that's wool. Uh, wool, I think, it is uh, warmer than most other fabrics. And it's, uh, it's actually warm when it's wet. So... And Melanie would know. She's from New Hampshire, which, trust me, I used to live there. It's cold there. She's lived in Alaska for a while, including wintering over there. She knows about cold, so she knows these things. Yeah. And people always say, oh, I'm just going to go where it's warm. I'm a snowbird, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you get stuck somewhere. And sometimes you get a crazy hot spell or a crazy cold spell or a crazy snowstorm yeah. that comes in. And you look at the radar and all the weather, and you realize you have to drive 500 miles to get out of it. And that's just not practical. So it's a good idea to be ready for some variety, even if you're quite confident you're going to be somewhere warm. And I have to tell the time, go to the desert, it's warm. First year I went to the desert, this is like eight years ago now, right? I get down there, southwest Arizona. The highs were in the 40s. It was sunny, which was nice. Highs were in the 40s. The lows were in the 20s every night. I had some cold weather gear, but not enough. I was, I mean, I got by, but I was cold. So even in the desert, it gets cold. So, yeah. so a good idea to have some comfortable stuff to layer up yep. and down as you need to. Sturdy shoes. Sturdy shoes. Gotta have them. I had thin soles when I first went to the desert, and the rocks are just so sharp. And, I, yeah, I, I killed my feet. So If I'm going soles. hiking in the desert, especially if you're around quartzite, some places are sandy. You're around quartzite and stuff, I insist on hard-soled boots because those rocks will tear your feet apart and they'll tear your shoes apart and you'll have bruises on your feet. I'm not exaggerating. I like to hike a lot and walk a lot and if I wear soft sole shoes down there after a little bit I can't even walk because my feet are so bruised. So if you're walking a lot and I'm talking like miles a day you really want some good boots and if you're going to be in sand a lot you probably want some higher boots that lace up good. Otherwise 
if you have like the lighter shoes like I have on right now, um, the sand gets in them, the sand comes through the toes of them. <laughs> your, your feet look like you haven't taken a bath in six months, even if you just took a shower the day before. So sturdy shoes are a must. Yep. Fabric cubes for storage. Fabric cubes, I like these. I think they're they're a nice size. I think they're 11 by 11 or something. I so, think so. Um, it's an odd they, size. But. Yeah, you, you can cram them <laughs> and they can kind of, you know, squish out so they're not, and, and they have a nice little handle in the front and you can, you know, hook a carabiner on it, put your keys someplace. And uh, yeah, I find them very handy. Stuff all your clean clothes in them. Yeah. Spray bottles. Spray bottles. Couldn't live without spray bottles. <laughs> They're great for everything. Yeah, cleaning dishes, cleaning whatever. And cleaning it uses yourself. such a, a minuscule amount of water, so you aren't having to constantly uh, go and get more water. A funny story about that. two years ago when I first got the trailer, my oldest granddaughter was over visiting, and I served her up some kind of food. I don't remember what it was. I got done and immediately took her plate to the sink to clean it up and I grabbed my spray bottle and I was standing in an RV park. I had running water, I, I had the holding tanks and, and a sewer hookup all the time. So I could have just washed it like normally. I didn't even think about it. I was in a van so long. I just grabbed my spray bottle, sprayed it down, started wiping it down. And she's like, why are you doing that pops? <laughs> and I thought she meant, why am I washing the dish right away? So I start, well, I like to keep everything tidy. And she's like, no, why are you spraying it? <laughs> <laughs> She'd never seen anybody do that. She was used to living in a house where you rinse stuff off and put it in the dishwasher. So, but yeah, there's a great way to do it, and it's just easy and uses very little water, which is nice. Yep. Sewing kit. Sewing kit. I have my favorite sewing kit. Um, I have a metal one so that I can put magnets on the inside, and uh, I can put my needles and everything. Needles are made out of steel usually, so they'll just. Uh, stick to the magnets so it helps keep everything tidy and yeah uh that's a that's a go-to for me my mother insisted my brother and i learn basic sewing so we can like sew a button on or patch something or you know that kind of thing i don't have to do it anymore because melanie's very skilled at sewing so she takes care of one we were watching a video today with donald from soft roading the west and we we had noticed he had duct tape on the hood of his nice outdoor jacket without wow what would happen to that right well then we saw the second video where he explained what happened to that and he gotten too close to his mr heater and melted it so melted a hole right through it so he duct taped it up and not picking on donald because that's exactly what i would have done but melanie's like i could fix that <laughs> so there's an advantage just having a sewing kit and be yeah. careful you mr heaters they get hot bible bible absolutely Got to have that words for life, right? Right, right. Reading and support, everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My new favorite one is the ESV study Bible. I have never seen such a good study Bible. So if you're looking for an awesome study Bible with tens of thousands of notes and all kinds of graphics and illustrations and charts and everything else that's the size of an encyclopedia, it's kind of like a, a, a reliable Bible translation and a light Bible commentary, whole Bible commentary and a Bible atlas or dictionary, all packed into one. So pretty cool. Cast iron skillet. Speaking of food. Yeah. Not we, so much the spiritual kind, but the physical kind. Right. We, we cook almost every meal almost every in a cast iron skillet. Yeah. yeah we have another sturdy. cast iron skillet in the van. It's a little bit smaller. Yeah. Trick with a cast iron skillet is getting them seasoned good and then making sure you keep it lubed up enough with oil. It took me a while to figure that out. I was frustrated for a long time, but... Now that I got it, it's amazing. And there's no better eggs. Sporks. Continuing on with the food sporks. thing. We, we have real silverware in the trailer. We do. We do. But the spork is something you can carry around with you um, and just have it the ready if you ever need it just on the fly. So Sporks are great for taking camping. Yeah. They're also great, even if you don't tr travel like we do or camp like we do, just throw in the glove box in your car. Then when... You're out and you need, you know, you get yeah. to pick up a snack and they forget to give you the silk plastic silverware or when it breaks or you don't want to use the plastic silverware and throw it away, you got something. So pretty candy. Yeah. Laundry bags. Laundry bags. I actually have two. I have one, a, kind of a sturdier one that I just put 
everyday stuff in, but when I'm going to the laundromat, I want to stuff it as full as possible and do as much laundry as possible. So I have one that actually expands, that's kind of stretchy, and, and I love that. I'd also say um, dryer balls. Uh, if you go into a laundromat a lot, you don't know how well the dryer sometimes uh, can dry things and you don't want to waste a lot of money. So I'm a big fan of dryer balls and you can get the kind I get or there's a whole bunch of different kinds. You can even use just a regular tennis ball and it's just enough to um, stir the clothing and the dryer around that uh, dries a lot quicker. Like quick food, like snack type things. Yeah, well, peanut or even a meal if you want a light meal. But. Yeah, peanut butter is my go-to. Uh, I always have that at the ready. If I just need a quick snack, there I am, and I don't have to cook things or uh, you know heat up water or anything. So we've also become big fans of tuna pouches. It's a little bit cheaper to get them in the cans, but the waste is less. It's it's a good single serving size. I find the smaller ones. We also have bigger ones, and it's just convenient. They're light. And there's less, it's easier to deal with the waste, yeah, especially you when you're like off grid and you're you don't have the water to, to dump out. It's, it's yeah, you yeah. don't have to worry about cutting the can. And so it's, yeah. we use those a lot, yeah. and they're great for just throwing a few in the vehicle with you and having them, or in your go bag and having something that's a quick, easy protein. You can zip the top off and get your spork out and yep. have at it. Also, canned fish or meat like sardines or you know, whatever your favorite canned fish or meat is. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good if you're camping. It's also good if the power goes out and you want something because uh, you can't run your stove or whatever else. Carabiners. Yep. Uh, I keep all my uh, keys on it. I can put it on my belt loop. I know where they are. Um, funny story, I was in a, a convenience store once and somebody came up to me and offered me a key. And uh, it's part of a scam. And I said, I pointed to my carabiner and my keys on my belt and I said nope got all my keys and uh, she left me alone but uh yeah it's uh I I had I knew where they are and uh I have a little uh, light on it too and if I'm walking and it's night I'll actually just turn on the light and just walk with it on me so you know people can see me at night too library card if you're in a small space this is you know you don't have a lot of room for a lot of books or if you, you know you want to watch a movie or uh, get a CD or something for music uh, library card you can uh, go get all those things it's also a good place to uh, cool off in the summer or heat up in the winter and uh, they have computers there so Wi-Fi there's a lot there so support your local library <laughs> weather radio uh, they're cool. I just got one two years ago, maybe. Um, they don't always work. Just play, like when I'm in town, they work great. When we're out in the mountains, eh, not so much. I mean, there's places in the Bighorns, apparently you can get a signal. The one time we tried to use it in the mountains, last summer, I guess, it was looking pretty gnarly. The sky was getting funky. We're like, do we need to be concerned? And we tried to turn on the weather radio and we couldn't get a station, we couldn't get a signal. So they're not always going to help you, but I think it's a good part of a toolkit to have uh, in addition to like your smartphone with an app on it that gives you weather alerts and, and then your weather radio and maybe anything else you want to use like a thermometer or actual weather station, whatever your own. But it can be handy to get that information when it works. The one we have does not have the alert function on it. Um, I thought at first that might be something I missed, but I've also heard from people that they like to put out oh, plenty of alerts on those things and it can get annoying and of course you have to have empowered connected to power and everything all the time to do that so i'm not sure if that's how much of a you know kind of one of these on the regional weather maps near to above average temperatures are expected through today with highs reaching into the 60s in some areas a strong cold front will pass through the region this afternoon bringing much colder air into the region by thanksgiving day and for the rest of the holiday weekend the jet boil stove or a striker stove in our case striker is kind of a clone of the jet boils the price is much better i think they're about 60 dollars at walmart if my memory's right uh so they're definitely cheaper than the jet boils as far as i can tell i've used both and as far as i can tell they work just as well yeah i've had mine for years we use it for coffee definitely anytime we're out and uh yeah we don't have a store or whatever it's it's great 
it's 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 about on a par with our electric kettle that we use when we're on grid on shore power for heating up water. So it's great. It's it's very fast, just a few minutes, which is nice when you're like me and you absolutely have to have your coffee in the morning before you do anything. Yeah, so. yeah, or just heat up a can of soup. Or just heat up a can of soup. There you go. Yeah, they don't simmer well. Some of them are designed to sim sort of simmer, but it's really more of a heat up water or soup or yeah. that kind of a yeah. thing tool. Yeah. Um, so it's probably, for most people, it's not going to work as your only stove. I mean, some people could, I guess, but for most people, it's going to be like part of your kit that is great for that end of it. On that note though, Melita pour over coffee basket, brewer, coffee brewer. Now there's other brands, Melita's just the one I have. Um, they're hard to find in stores, once in a while you can. The general, it's hard to find retail though, but you can get them on online, like on Walmart and stuff. And before I got, I've had a couple of them now, before I got one of these for legit, I was going through different ways of trying to make my own. I was like taking tin cans and cleaning them out good and drilling holes in them and trying to use a filter. <laughs> I never got it. I, I mean, it sort of worked, but it was never quite as good as the legit basket. I think because of the cone shape. But anyway, that's what I use every day to make my coffee, whether we're on grid, staying somewhere, or whether we're off grid in the wilderness. I use the same thing. And I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're going anywhere remote, even if you're driving on roads remote, or if you're going out in the wilderness, whatever, having a personal locator beacon or a satellite messenger service. The one I have is the ACR Rescue Link. Thanks, Mom and Dad. They're worried about me the places I go, so they sent that out. Um, it's in, it, with the case of the ACR Rescue Link, it goes via satellite, gets straight to the uh, to NOA um, offices, and they'll dispatch search and rescue or the appropriate agencies for you based on the terrain where your GPS coordinates show you are. Garmin InReach is another one. There, there may be others out there, but those are kind of the two big ones that I see most often. Slightly different feature sets. Garmin, you do get Garmin's, if, if you do an emergency transmit on that, you do get Garmin's uh, phone answers. I've heard... I, I, I'm sure it works fine sometimes, but I have heard some people had some real problems at a time when they did not need a failure. Uh, the spot is another one. So there's a few, um, but I, I do highly recommend having something so that you're sure that even if you are outside a cell phone range and an emergency happens, you can call for help. All right, Ryobi cordless power tools. If you got any kind of a van build, if you'd like to do any kind of projects, you're gonna have to fix stuff or do things. And I don't think there's a better deal out there than the Rayleigh cordless power tools. Good value for the money for handymen, and which I, I used to do professionally. I mean, that was my job for a long time. Um, you know, regular maintenance people, uh, uh, you know, travelers or homeowners, fantastic tools. They got like everything you can imagine available to work with the same batteries. So I definitely recommend those. Good value for the money. Mr. Heater Portable Buddy. Even if you're going to the desert in the winter, you're going to want to stay warm when it's Probably, unless you're really hardcore, you're going to want to get warmed up when it's cold in the evening and cold in the morning. And if you're anything like me, almost every winter I end up spending some time in Wyoming or upstate New York or <laughs> somewhere where it's cold and snowing. When I say cold, I mean like sub-zero and snow like not a dusting, but like, yeah. So not everybody runs into that. I do. I don't mind it. Um... But I definitely need heat when that happens. We use electric heaters when we're on grid primarily. We had one of the, we've had the fan powered little ones after having several of them fail in fairly short intervals, six months a year. We're trying now an uh, uh, oil filled radiator one. It's working surprisingly well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But when we're off grid or when it's really, really cold, like sub zero, which we've already run into, I guess we were just above zero this year. Last year I had sub zero. This winter we've already run into single digits down very close to zero we got it coming again this week then we sometimes have to turn on the mr heater to really blast out the heat and that that does it 
Or if the power goes out in an emergency, it's just... Or if the power goes out. Because it doesn't have an electric need. Or if I forget to turn off the electric heater before I turn on the electric kettle and blow the breaker and don't realize what I did and think the power is out, but the power is not really out, it's just our breaker flipped. Hypothetically, I'm not saying I really did that, but... Or that I did it more than once. Egg pot, or a little titanium cook pot. Yeah, I just like it because uh, you don't need a whole lot of water to cook. Uh, I can cook half a dozen eggs easy, and uh, it heats up real quick, and uh, it's just easier. Yeah, I just like it. Pot. I just like it because it's cute. A long lighter and matches. Long lighters, you don't burn your fingers. I've burned my hands too many times lighting a stove with a regular lighter. Matches to light your stove, etc. when it's cold and your butane won't light. True story, if it's sub-freezing, your butane's not going to light. That includes your butane stove if you have one. Now, the word hack around that is to take your butane lighter or your butane canisters for your stove to bed with you, or at the very least to stuff them inside your heavy shirt or your jacket and you know, your armpit, let them warm up for a while. But when you really want to make coffee on a cold morning and your stove won't light or your lighter won't work, you'll be wishing you had some good old matches. Plus, it's good to have a backup. I always try and carry an extra lighter and the matches so when the lighter dies, which always dies at an inconvenient time, you got something else to light it with. And by inconvenient, I mean you just get up into the mountains and you're 30 miles from the nearest little town and you have no way to light something, so you want to spare and matches. And besides, there's just something satisfying about whoosh, Lighters just don't have the same satisfaction to them. All right, kneeling pad, because we all got to kneel down sometimes, and the older we get, the less we want to kneel down. Yeah, I my knees can't do it anymore. So <laughs> um, uh, any kind of kneeling pad you got, it's also good if you got some squeaks somewhere, you don't know what it is. Sometimes you can just stuff that in something and it's bothering you that way. Um, it's good something to sit on. Um, it's just a little bit sturdier. Um, on any chair or any even it gives a little more cushion so melanie's got a couple i never remember to use them i'm always in agony with my knees and then she shows up with a thing to make me more comfortable because that's how she rolls all right before we go 2024 photo calendars are coming soon we have all the photos picked up we've already talked to the local printer we'll be sending those in this week and we'll have them hopefully next week so in other words by the first of december hopefully they're going up we'll do a formal announcement when they're ready uh in the meantime they'll be going on the website and uh so keep an eye out for that if you want one we might be able to get we're, we're not raising the prices this year even though everything else in the world has gone up we're not raising prices and we we think we might be able to lower the prices this year working with a local printer so but meanwhile what about you what is your favorite or must-have gear tool gadget whatever leave us a comment below let us know what you think and if you don't have a favorite let us know which one you think is the best off our list today <laughs> links to all these or at least as many as we can find links for are in the video description below and i'll also try and have links down there for the other videos and things we mentioned in this video well hey thanks for joining us everybody hope you had a blessed thanksgiving with loved ones and family and friends and what have you and We'll be catching you soon in another video.